Hey boss, I got something you might want to take a look at. Oh yeah? This better be good. Alright everybody, move out of here. Come on, there's nothing to see. Move out. Come on. Looks like another big time on UPF-1. Yeah, I found it this way about an hour ago. I was investigating the role of UPF-1 in the nonsense-mediated mRNA decay pathway. Nonsense-mediated mRNA decay is a pathway used by the cell to degrade mRNAs with premature termination codons before they can encode truncated proteins that can harm the cell. UPF-1 is a key activator of the NMD pathway. It is an ATP-dependent RNA helicase that recruits NMD-specific protein factors to the substrate in order to promote endonucleolytic cleavage of the mRNA. The two mRNA products are rapidly degraded by 3' to 5' prime and 5' prime to 3' prime exonucleases. However, it is currently unclear what role UPF-1's helicase activity plays in the process. But I thought you'd almost figured it out. Yeah, well, I mean, the trail's kind of gone cold. Look at this. When I express an ATPase mutant of UPF-1, the mRNA substrate is stabilized. But I don't actually know what the ATPase activity could be doing in this pathway. But it's obviously playing some function in that pathway. Yeah, but what? I think it is time for some more interrogation. Well, 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 Mr. UPF-1. I already know you're in on the degradation of countless numbers of mRNAs. That alone is enough to send you to the proteasome. But if you tell me how you and your friend ATP here degraded all those mRNAs, I might be able to work out some sort of a deal. No, you don't have the evidence, so that means I'm out of here. Where do you think you're going? Get back here. Well, I guess that's it then. UPF-1 just gets away and there's nothing we can do about it. Wait, wait, what's that? This what? It looks like the 3' mRNA fragment that is produced when an NMD substrate is targeted for endonucleotic cleavage becomes stabilized when UPF-1 helicase movements are overexpressed. Do you think that the UPF-1 dependent helicase activity is required at a decay step after endonucleolytic cleavage of the substrate? It appears so. Although RNA helicases were once thought to be proteins whose main function it is to unwind double-stranded RNA, recent research has revealed they are also important for RNP remodeling under various circumstances. UPF-1 recruits a large mRNP downstream of the stop codon on NMD substrates, which is important for recognition of the premature stop codon and targeting of the mRNA for endonucleolytic cleavage. Perhaps UPF-1 uses this helicase activity to remove this mRNP from the 3' mRNA fragment to promote 5' to 3' exonucleolytic decay of that fragment. And when UPF-1 cannot highlight CTE, the 5' to 3' exonuclease is blocked and the 3' mRNA fragment accumulates. If we can find more evidence for this, we can put UPF-1 away for good. Hey boss, I just got the results back on the UPF-1 case. How does it look? Well, remember that 3' mRNA fragments of NMD substrates are stabilized when UPF-1 cannot hydrolyze ATP? Well, I found that UPF-1 is not properly released from these stabilized 3' fragments. In addition, other proteins that make up the NMD mRNP are also stuck on the 3' mRNA fragment when UPF-1 cannot hydrolyze ATP. That's great. Wait, there's more. Remember that unstable mRNPs awaiting decay are stored in discrete foci in the cell called processing bodies? I checked to see if the NMD mRNP can be detected in processing bodies in cells expressing UPF1 ATPase mutants and found that the 3' mRNP is strongly enriched in processing bodies. Let's see what UPF1 has to say about that. Not so fast. Where do you think you're going? Come on, we got plenty of evidence to convict. Well, it looks like case closed, so what's next? Well, you know how chromatin remodeling is really important in transcription? 
maybe we should stop thinking of imanis as naked molecules and start thinking of them as iman peas. Well, I guess I know what that means. Yep. Back to work.